Let me also address for a moment this issue of reopening of schools. There's a debate raging across the country right now about what the, this autumn will look like for our nation's schools, the school children, teachers, and school staff. You've heard the president who has literally threatened those who don't reopen their schools that they may lose federal funding if they don't reopen schools. What is that funding spent for? Special education, school lunches, help for kids in poor schools. The message has been reiterated by the loyal education secretary, Betsy DeVos. She too has joined in the threats on schools that don't reopen. Now the Republicans in the Senate have taken that threat and turned it into legislation with their proposal in the next relief package. Let me be really clear. There is a concern about empty classrooms. Those who study childhood behavior worry that lack of socialization takes its toll on childhood development. Teachers are often sentinels for evidence of child abuse, which now may be going unreported. Remote learning works well for some, but not for others. But that's not the concern of this president. He wants schools back so he can claim some kind of false victory over the coronavirus. Last week, I led 24 of my colleagues in writing to the majority and Democratic leaders opposing putting children and teachers in any danger by conditioning funding on schools reopening in person. Recently, I had the opportunity to visit the Little Village Academy in Chicago with the Chicago Public Schools Chief, Janice Jackson. Some wonderful people are there each day passing out lunches to the kids in the neighborhood who come around the school. They haven't reopened for classes. They hope they will, but that decision is still to be made. I can tell you in Chicago and around my home state of Illinois, school boards, administrators, teachers, parents, and others are facing these decisions honestly. They have to provide a safe and effective learning environment for students and for teachers, whether that be in person, in school, or at home. Unlike President Trump, who's nicely insulated in the bubble of the White House with the multiple daily COVID-19 tests for everyone who just might come in contact with them, these education professionals in my home state of Illinois have to answer directly to the families and their communities. It's a decision that local officials are best suited to make without intimidation or threats from Washington, D.C. But Washington does have a role to play the best thing we can do is to help local school districts through this difficult fall and beyond is to provide the federal assistance and support they need to ensure the path they choose is one that keeps students and staff safe while allowing learning and development to continue effectively. It's why as we negotiate a fourth coronavirus response package, I'll be pushing for the inclusion of the Coronavirus Child Care and Education Relief Act being led in the Senate by Senator Patty Murray of Washington. In addition to supporting child care, early education, and higher education, the bill provides $175 billion to elementary and secondary schools to help meet technology, cleaning, staffing, and other needs of schools. It provides funds to school districts based on their share of low-income children. In that way, it's similar to the CARES Act, which brought more than $200 million to the Chicago Public Schools and a total of $512 million across our state of Illinois. Compare that $175 billion to the $70 billion being offered on the Republican side. Another classic example. We believe this is a serious national issue when it comes to education. The Republicans do not. The amount of money that they are proposing is a fraction of what we offer, and it's conditioned on the schools actually reopening in person, regardless of what is the safest thing for the school and the teachers and the students in any given area. Congress shouldn't put state and local officials in the position of choosing between desperately needed federal assistance and the safety of students and school personnel. Congress shouldn't incentivize schools to reopen in person prematurely or penalize those where the public health situation makes it dangerous. The argument from the administration seems to go, well, if schools don't reopen, they either don't deserve or don't need any help. That's just not the case. Even schools that are not able to reopen in person need assistance ensuring their students, especially those from low-income families, have the ability to participate in remote learning. 
They need help keeping staff on payroll, preparing the buildings so that they can return in person in the future, and addressing any number of difficulties this pandemic has created. School buses, if there's going to be social distancing of the kids on the buses, will there be a need for additional buses and bus drivers? In addition to funding, the federal government should also ensure that schools have science-based guidance to support safe reopening, free from political influence and presidential quackery. They also need the flexibility to continue serving critical meals to our students, regardless of what the school year looks like this fall. Chicago Public Schools have done an incredible job providing 18 million meals since March. We need to ensure that the U.S. Department of Agriculture provides the range of alternative options needed to make sure that no kid in America goes hungry. Schools in Chicago and around our state don't need any more tweets or self-congratulatory briefings, Mr. President. They need federal resources and guidance based on the best science our government has to offer. And that's why I'm fighting for this relief package to be at a level to meet the challenge we face across America. Let me close by saying this. Majority Leader comes to the floor regularly and talks about special interest. Perhaps he can explain to us why the Republican proposal for relief for the COVID-19 virus includes a $2 billion allocation for a new FBI building across the street from the Trump Hotel. Perhaps he can explain the $30 billion wish list from the Department of Defense, trying to make up for cuts that were made when the president raided their accounts to build his almighty wall on the southern border. And perhaps the majority leader can explain to us the liability immunity which is being proposed by the Republican side is a red line, take it or leave it, we'll walk away if you don't like it, approach. It'd be one thing if the Republican leader were in the room actually negotiating, but he just makes a red line and walks away. That red line is a subsidy to the largest corporations in America, giving them liability from immunity, liability immunity when it comes to possible court suits. Wouldn't we want a standard to make sure that all businesses and every individual, our group, our business, is doing its best to keep America safe. When we say that don't worry about any liability in court if you ignore public health reality, that's no guarantee that it's going to be a safe environment for America when we reopen this economy. Mr. President, Madam President, I yield the floor.